practicing in front of my uh, pit bull puppy, and she bit the shit out of my hand and she jumped on my MacBook. <laughs> so, how many people here know what HDR is? Well, hopefully, more of you will learn by the end of this. So, HDR stands for high dynamic range. <laughs> Essentially, it means uh, more, lum more luminosity, you see lighter lights, darker darks, and essentially it's a process to make photos look better. And that's the loom. It's not really bad, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the basic idea behind HDR, well, the original intent was to make uh, photos look just like you can see, you see them by your eye. Uh, the problem is, all these wannabe photographers come on Flickr and they make them like unrealistic and look really cool like this. So, there's some, some photographer here who still really like HDR. So there's lots of styles. So here's how I got into HDR. I won a Ford contest, they gave me a car, and every month I have a mission to do. And one mission was to hook up with local photographers like Tim Doerr and uh, take pictures of the car in, in uh, HDR style. So I've only known about it for like two months now. And uh, so you're going to need a few things. First off, um, a camera of some sorts. Uh, bonus points, it does auto bracketing, which means it takes all the exposures in order, uh, so you don't have to do anything fancy. And also, uh, save to RAW. RAW is a file format that gets all the raw sensor data, so you have all the detail in the same shot. And uh, unless you have a freakishly steady hand, you need a tripod. And this is probably the best piece of advice I can give any photographer, regardless if you're doing HDR or not. Uh, make shots perfect, especially with HDR, we need to, to uh, line up your shots later. So the basic idea behind HDR is to take uh, usually three shots, exact same shot subject, uh, one after the other, and the only difference is the exposure has changed. So you put them in software, you merge them together, and you get something that looks pretty cool like this, depending on your style. And then, uh, first, actually the hardest thing is probably... You need to extend it to aperture. <laughs> so you do all that stuff, and then you can't really set up. Uh, turn, on, turn on raw, I want to save to raw. Uh, self timer is very handy. Uh, you need to set it to, to take in three shots and do it continuously after delay. That's handy so when you press the timer, uh, the camera doesn't move after you let go. And then uh, also, do uh, an aperture priority mode. So you need to have a fixed aperture, so uh, the only thing changes is the exposure. And uh, the lower the ISO, the better, because uh, HDR actually emphasizes any noise in your images. So, as low as you can go. Okay, so now everything's set up. What are, what are you going to shoot? Uh, you don't want to shoot monkeys, they, they fling poo and they, they're pretty angry. Uh, you want to do something that's well lit that doesn't move. So I recommend architecture, buildings, cars that aren't moving. Uh, that's my favorite. So now you have all your shots, what are you going to do with them? You need software processes. The problem is all the free software is either really hard to use and you need to know what histograms are, or they, uh, there's a limit to what you can do. So I recommend uh, something like Photomatics Pro. It's 99 bucks if you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have all your shots, it's pretty much imported. Uh, most applications have something called Generate HR Image. It makes it, and then you have this crappy looking image and you're wondering what the hell you did wrong. That's where tone mapping comes. Uh, tone mapping is essentially putting all the tonal ranges in, basically compressing it to something that your display can actually display. Uh, most displays, most HDRs are 32-bit, most displays are 8-bit, unless you got uh, suckered into buying a MacBook, which is a 6-bit display. <laughs> and there's two types of uh, tone, tone compression mapping uh, algorithms in, in Photomax Pro. Tone compression, you don't see it too often. It makes everything look actually realistic. And then there's the badass detail enhancing mode, which make things, makes things look cool. So this is the basic interface of uh, Photomatic Pro. <laughs> and, uh, basically, there's not much instruction. All you have to do is move the slider until it looks good. <laughs> and uh, that's, all it for, that's, that's all you need to do for regular HDR. But you must, might be wondering, well, you said to take pictures of stuff that doesn't move, so how do you do stuff that's moving. Well, the trick is to do one raw shot of, um, of something and just overexpose it, underexpose it, save it as three files, use HDR on that. And that was basically it. Uh, the problem with that is that if you do any tracking with the camera, it's going to get all fucked up. So you need to use this, uh, <laughs> one tracking, one non-tracking shot, and then you can drop it. <laughs> so after you know all that, what else can you do? Well, if you're really dedicated, you can do something like a panoramic HDR, where you do a bunch of shots in the sequence and uh, use a lot of shots. This is actually only 12 shots. I've seen some that use up to over 30 shots. This is actually Norway. And uh, if you want to know more, just use my blog, eastam.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Stanley. And I usually talk this fast in real life, too. <laughs>